So how about how about conditions then? Because when I say conditions, I'm talking about the idea that boxing is obviously a very very hard sport. Um, it's always been a a a working class sport. You have to condition yourself to to pain, to hardship. There's there's no getting around that because if you go into pro boxing, that is going to happen. You're going to find yourself in a world of hurt at some point where it will come down really to how much you want it, whether you can survive those moments when you really feel like quitting. So old school things like getting up in the middle of the night in the driving rain to go for a run. Is that what that is about? Is that is that about mindset? Because there's no reason why running at half past four in the morning is going to get you any fit in the running at six o'clock in the evening. It's, it's just about a matter of getting your body used to something. You know, it, it doesn't matter where me, I was a morning, I, my, as I adapted over the years, I used to get up at five o'clock in the morning, I go for a run at six. Uh, I come back and have my breakfast. I chill out for an hour or two. I'd be in the gym by half 11, 12. I do another full on hard session, but then I'd have all that time to recover. So even, even throughout my career, I sort of tweaked a few things, which, which helped me quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's, it's a matter of, of taste, it's a matter of opinion, it's a matter of what, what suits you. Like, like I said, what worked for me, getting up in the morning, I see the lock out the window, I see it belting down the rain. Um, for me then, to go out there, just a, just a mindset then of nothing, nothing's going to hold me back, nothing's going to stop me, um, and, and get out there. So it, it's just a matter of taste, it's a matter of opinion, it's a matter of uh, how much you want it as well. Do you know, do you know what it is as well? And it, just going a little bit back, I suppose, and I'm not going to go back too much, but I just want to keep moving. But when you said about, like, you know, you've done the run and then you come in, you do 12 rounds sparring and you do 12 rounds on the pads, you know, I mean, you, you could say there that, well, how you, you I know the, the, F, the, the work ethic and the effort that's going in is 100% flat out, but is the output really that quality? Because if you're tired, it can't possibly be as good. It's like, the easy days, recovering from the, if you go, if you train really hard on Monday, look where you push the limit and you've, you go past the pain barriers, you, you won't be able to do it again the next day, not to the same quality, where if you rest and your body recovers and then it gets fitter and then you push again, you'll be more efficient and you'll be fresher. It's like, for example, let's say we had a, let's say we did the bench, um, bench press and we did 10 reps. Right. And we did 10 reps the next day and 10 reps the next day. Eventually, the, the, you know, or whatever, or, or, you know, whatever, however way you do it, eventually the muscles are going to get tired. Now, you may, as, I, as I'm sure you would, Enzo, and I would have, we're going to keep gritting another set of 10 out and we're going to keep gritting another 10 out because we're boxers and we're lunatics and we're super determined and we don't give in to pain. But the bar is going to start moving slower <clears throat> and slower and slower we might get the volume out because we're gritting the volume out we will not let it beat us but the bar will start moving more slower and that's the that that moving faster or slower would so you know that could be the difference between slipping a shot moving a shot the velocity at which the bar moves is if the muscles are tired all the will in the world isn't going to move it fast. I'm not saying we won't do the same volume because we're gritting it out, but we're not going to do it as good, as fast, as sharp. It's like over a 12 rounds. We might grit 12 rounds out, but the quality might diminish because mm -hmm. we're tired. And the, when the muscles get fresh, you're not as sharp, you're not as quick, you don't react as fast. And that's what performance is about. It's like the 100 meters. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're tired, you won't move as quickly as someone that is fresh. So rest is as important as the volume and the grit and the breaking the pain barriers because if the muscle isn't fresh, it will not move as fast. You can, you can will it all you want in the world and you can, you'll get there and you might do the same volume, but you won't, if the muscle isn't uh, recovered properly, it won't move as quick. And that's, that's what performance is all about. 100% agree with you. You know, that, that's what I said. You know, if, I, if I could tweak a few things, it would be the, the odd rest day here, the odd rest day there. Um, you know, I look at some of my fighters and we, we train hard in my gym, but, you know, I notice on the end of the week and then I'll pull one to one side, I'll give him something different. Uh, and like you said, it's all about recovery. And um, I was always, a, as, as a youngster, I was always like, you know, if I got up in the morning, I... I basically couldn't get out of bed. I was in agony and I, I looked at the window and I seen that rain. Um, I still go. And, you know, looking back now, that, that day off of just laying in that bed, that extra hour, 
uh, and going for a walk instead of a run, you know, that would have benefited me massively. So it's it's all as you know, South Matt, it's, it's all learning, it's all it's all the experience, um, how how you did things, how you do things, what you could have done better, and uh, and all the examples you give there uh, were perfect. You know, it's, it's going to come a point where at the end of the week we're doing the same thing over and over again with the same intensity over and over again. The technique's going to falter a little bit. The 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 output is going to falter a little bit, and you know your running times are going to falter. Your punch output's going to falter. Your, your power, your speed, your explosive, everything is going to falter. So looking back, uh, like I said, those little tweaks I would have made would have been diet. Uh, and definitely a couple of days off here and there, or not even a day off, just just like sometimes life. less is more. Sometimes, do you know 100%, what I mean? Hundred percent. And you know, I've learned I've learned that over the years. Um, you know, I, even even though at the age of forty, I'm still working myself to the bone, and uh, I always had that that self motivation. That I think is about seven or eight fights, title fights I had, where I literally trained myself. And when I say train myself. I mean, stopwatch on the floor, uh, it in a bag, going away for a bit of sparring, um, coming back, no trainer, nothing. So, you know, the, the motivation was there. So it would have been nice to have someone doing them times, lock ends, calm it down today. Like when I went with Gary, um, you know, Gary, Gary didn't change too much about me, uh, but he did. He did start bringing in the odd easy day there, here and there for me, the rest day, uh, like you said, on the, on the pads one day would be the body bag which was the worst thing in the world for me it was like I used to hitting someone and then falling over you know with that body bag just keeps coming at you and keeps coming at it the next day and it'd be 10 rounds on the pads but after time be talking um, have, a, have a little sweat on so you know I think the rest side of things uh, not, not everyone gets it right uh, and that's that's a main thing they should be working on especially these youngsters coming through yeah, if you don't rest, you just get jaded. You don't get fit. You know, if you don't let that. When you overload, you break a you break a pain barrier. But if you don't let it rest and the recovery happen for the fitness for your body to adapt and get fitter, and you just keep grinding and grinding, eventually you, you just get jaded or you get injured. Your body says, yeah. "Fuck off, leave me alone." Do you know what I mean? It, it, it was more rather than the overtraining. It was the injuries for me. Um, you know, it's. The amount of times I went to a fight, like like all fighters do, so I'm not making excuses, but the amount of times I've gone into a fight where I have no business being in a ring. And it's not it's not from me feeling overtrained, it's just like you said, you've overloaded the muscles, you push yourself to the limit, and it comes up, it comes a point there and then when little niggles start to happen, those little niggles, you try to run through them, you try to push through them, then little niggles get into big niggles, and then it's just the mental aspect then of going in that ring, knowing for well, you haven't done the runs properly, you haven't done, even though you've tried, you haven't done the boxing properly, you haven't done the runs properly. Um, so yeah, rest is massive. And you know, I try to tell all my young fighters, and uh, I, I even done a few things on Twitter where it was aimed at the young fighters coming through. And I think the, the object was less is more. Well, we'll, ret we'll return to rest as a subject in, in just a minute because there's one thing in particular that really interests me about that, which, which we haven't quite touched on. But before I forget, where do you both stand on the hard sparring debate? Because there are differing opinions on this. You look at the Ingle Gym, for example, they do body sparring, although I know that they will throw them in with some amateurs or even with some, some white collar fighters who will then be told that their aim is to try and you know, take, take their head off and they've got to avoid that. So they will have people coming at them. But at the Ingle Gym, they will generally, with the pros anyway, they won't do head sparring because they believe that it puts too many miles on the clock that you're going to have hard fights. And, and why do that? Why take that out of yourself in the gym? Tundia J has become well known in boxing circles the last two or three years, basically for his his belief as well, that the head sparring, the hard sparring is, is counterproductive. So you first, Enzo, sparring, how how important is it? How much of it do you need to do? Spar sparring is good. Sparring is good for timing. It's, it's, it's good for the, the distance of gauging the distance. Um, I I changed over the years. This is one of the big things I changed over the years. Um, obviously, I'm very heavy-handed, uh, and when I was younger, I was sparring boys, and I was just blowing them away. And it, it was literally 
Um, I, I won't mention no names, but I went to a few places. Uh, I went to one in particular. Uh, I spotted a, a very well-known high-level heavyweight. I had to drive five hours to go there. We went at it for a round really flat out. I cracked him with a body shot and he went down. That was my sparring over. I had, I had a title fight coming up. And in that camp, I'd done one round of sparring. Just just for me being so heavy-handed and trying. Uh, and trying. I, I found I was better. Um, and I was sparring like the boys. Uh, as they went on, I was sparring like the boys. I tried to keep up with their pace. I tried to keep up with their boxing ability. Uh, and that's when I found... I was a little bit better. I do believe it. In the, you need a hard spar now and again, um, you know, just to get you accustomed to what it's like being in the ring um, all the time. No, but, but like I said, for me, when I started changing, especially when I went to the Gary's, um, you know, he basically said, "End. If you spar like you fight, we're not going to get no sparring." And you know, I sort of adapted and I've changed, uh, and I, I've done that ever since. I've done twenty rounds. With the boxers from my gym the other day, all weights, all levels. Uh, it, it didn't hurt any of them hard, and I probably got more out of that than half as far as I ever had. Matt, Matt, where are you on this? Because you've obviously you, you split your career. You're in the UK. You're in the USA as well. Uh, so you saw the you know the different schools of sparring in 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 those two countries. What are your thoughts? Do you need to spar hard? and put a lot of hard rounds in, in preparation for a fight? Does it change over the course of a career? Does it, does it change depending on who you're fighting? I think it, it, it completely depends on all of those things. It depends on who you are, what your style is, what your mentality is. Um, you know, for example, if, if it's someone like um, Frankie Gavin, who doesn't get hit, I'd, I'd spar Frankie Gavin 12 rounds many times before a fight and bring in different sparring partners because he's got that footwork, he's a southpaw, he's got a speed and he doesn't get hit much. So I'd spar Frank. I'd, Frankie's better off sparring 12 rounds than doing six and the pads and the body belt. I'd just, do, I'd just spar him. I'd spar him all the time. Not every day, but, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday and I'd spar up to 12 rounds. Someone like Ricky Hatton never sparred more than six because Ricky Hatton sparred hard. He sparred intense. He was short, stocky. He, he, he'd slip and slide and get into shots. And of course, when he's a, a little bit heavier and he's not quite sharp, you get hit with a lot of shots. So, you know, if you was if, you, if Ricky Ricky hadn't sparred for about done about six sessions, and they were usually like a couple of fours, and then maybe three or four sixes, and that's what he sparred. And then he but Billy would take the rounds up to twelve intensive rounds with the body belt. So Ricky would do six rounds sparring, get the head guard and the sixteen ounce gloves on, bang on the ten ounce gloves. So you're talking probably a couple of minutes for that to happen. Then he do six hard rounds on the body belt. And when Ricky Hatton was in his peak, there weren't many fighters on this planet that could do 12 rounds at a better pace than him. So it worked for him. Do you know what I mean? But like someone like Frankie Gavin, who doesn't get hit in sparring, I'd spar all day long because why yeah. not? Get get your eye, get your distance, get sharp. You're getting your conditioning. He's getting fit over the, you know, specifically fit for fighting, fighting fit boxing, 12 rounds. He's not getting, there is no miles on the clock for Frankie Gavin in sparring, just like there wasn't for Manny Pacquiao in the wild card when I watched him sparring. But someone like me, someone like Ricky Hatton, who, you know, get hit a bit, take one to give one sometimes. I don't think over sparring too much of hard sparring is too good. But I'm, I'm also the type of person that, if I sparred guys too much below me, I couldn't really get up for the spar. And then I was shy anyway. Then I wasn't sharp. <laughs> and a bit like, you know, like Ricky. Ricky needed that bit of fear. He was flipping, sliding. So he needed to be sparring hard enough, intense enough, someone good enough that kept him on his toes, that made him slip and slide and react and be sharp. But you couldn't do too much of that because if there was too much of that sparring, it wouldn't have been, there wouldn't have been a fight. He'd have left it in the gym. You know, you talk about fighters leaving it in the gym. If you if you if you have too much wars in the gym, then you've you've left it there. You talk. You hear about the great Philly fighters that never really made it as pro like Ivan Robinson. You know, I heard he was one of the best amateurs you've ever seen in your life. But the amount of wars he had in the gym in Philadelphia was unbelievable. Magic Taylor, all these guys, they were having ding dongs three times a week in the gym. You know what I mean? There's only so much. 
it's miles on the clock. You drive a car, you drive a Ferrari. If, you, if there's 100,000 miles on it, it's, it's going to pack up. Do you know what I mean? And mm. sparring, it's, there's not one set rule. So back to, to Ricky Hat needed the intensity. I needed intensity. You know, I needed it to make me sharp. So I had to have a couple of hard spars. But I couldn't, that couldn't be for too long. Or you, there'd be two, you'd have left the fight in the gym. You, you wouldn't have took it into the fight. But again, someone like Frankie Gavin, Manny Pacquiao, who've got that footwork and have got that speed, who don't get hit, I'd spar them all day long. 